Hi, this is Reverend Paul Jakes, and welcome to Love in Action, a program that certainly deals with uh, much of the issues of everyday life in Illinois, in Chicago, and we are very excited today to have you joining us because we have uh, two special guests that will be coming to us from the Illinois uh, Attorney General's Office. Uh, we know that Lisa Madigan has been doing a lot. Soon she will be leaving the office. She decided not to run, but yet the office is still functioning and has an excellent staff that will come and will share some many different areas. Uh, this is National Crime Victims Week, and we will deal with subjects on today on sexual assault, domestic violence, and homicide victims, and how victims can find compensation to help them with uh, funerals and also hospitalization. Uh, please join in with us, and uh, I'm excited about the show. I hope that you will as well. Please join us. Love in action. Hi, this is Reverend Paul Jakes. Welcome you, you back with us uh, with the Love in Action program. And today uh, we are very glad to have Cindy Hara. She is the division chief with the Attorney General's office and she is helping us to understand many different areas, areas of sexual abuse, domestic violence, uh, homicide, uh, this is very important, and uh, she is wearing a green ribbon. Uh, uh, Cindy Hara, welcome to the show, and tell us what that green ribbon is all about. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, this is National Crime Victims Week, Rights Week. Um, during that time, we kind of honor and acknowledge what crime victims go through mm -hmm. and some of the horrific experiences they, they have endured, um, as well as trying to raise public awareness mm -hmm. um, about the plight of crime victims and really to highlight the services and that that are available, because I think a lot of people aren't aware of them. Mm -hmm. So what our office, we have a display in the Thompson Center, and our staff um, is giving out ribbons. We have four different colors. Mm -hmm. The teal here is for sexual assault. We have blue, which is for child abuse. Mm. We have a uh, very deep purple, which is for domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And then Mr. Williams was wearing a red, which is for drunk driving. Well, someone needs to get me a ribbon. I should have brought you one. I apologize. <laughs> yes, no, no problem. I understand this program uh, was really started uh, under President Reagan's administration? The National Crime Victims' Rights Week was. It was, mm -hmm. um, he actually had a task force um, mm -hmm. to look at the plight of victims and things like that. And many of the, th the programs that we have today kind of arose out of that task force report. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he did do was he signed a proclamation declaring, you know, a week in April as National Crime Victims' Rights Week, and we've been celebrating it for 30-some years since. Yes. Well, so. let me thank you, and I want to thank Lisa Madigan once again uh, for having uh, her staff to come and to be a part of this. Uh, there are a lot of barriers that I know that families go through, mm -hmm. and uh, how is Lisa Madigan's office, the Attorney General's office, providing help uh, for people when these barriers come. And certainly, uh, violence in any uh, area is rough, it's mm -hmm. horrific, it is very, very hard to bear. Uh, 
what uh, what what does uh, the office do to help them uh, overcome some of these barriers? Well, we have a number of programs. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Williams talked to you about the Crime Victims Compensation Program. Mm -hmm. We pro um, we process probably about 3,500 claims a year. Oh, really? Yes, across the state. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as he told you, we do a lot of violent crimes, yes. and we have. It's not just the victim who's injured or or killed, it's also, you know, as family mm -hmm. members and that can apply for services. So we do a lot of, uh, you know, financial assistance because sure. many people wouldn't be able to get those services unless yeah. they had some financial mm -hmm. assistance. Um, we have some other programs. We have um, a grant program called the Violent Crimes Victim Assistance Grant Program. It provides about $6 million to mm -hmm. various victim service agencies across the state. So we'll, um, you talked about domestic violence earlier with Mr. Williams. Uh, we provide funding to domestic violence shelters and programs, to rape crisis centers, to children's advocacy centers, to um, elder abuse programs, um, impaired driving programs, mm. uh, court-appointed special advocates who work with child victims in uh, abuse and neglect cases. Mm -hmm. So while we're not maybe providing the services directly to the victims, we're providing the money and the funding so that these agencies can provide those services. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, when I heard you say uh, elderly, uh, that have been hurt, you know, many. Mm -hmm. uh, I know uh, I had a, a, a cousin who was in uh, the nursing home, mm -hmm. and um, there was a man that was in a room right across from her. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was not an employee, but he was uh, someone that uh, had some problems. He came in, he walked over, he slapped her, knocked mm -hmm. her down and then went back in his room and went back to sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that? That's something that we could assist with. For example, compensation could pay for any medical bills or whatever. For up um, to how many years? Uh, because she's been dead for over a year now. Um, well, if the crime occurred within the past two years, hmm. her family could apply if they were responsible for the... Um, wow. Uh, yeah. expenses and I mean that may be difficult on her children as well I mean sure. to have a loved one in a facility that yeah. you want them to take the best care of your parent yes. and have something like that happen oh, I mean yeah. if they needed counseling expenses as long as the application is filed within the two years yes. of the crime um, they would be eligible so we could help that way wow. we have an 800 number 1-800-228-3368 which provides a lot yeah. of referral information, you mm -hmm. know, those programs I told you that we mm -hmm. fund. Mm -hmm. um, if, for example, a domestic violence victim gives us a call and says, you know, I really need help, I, you know, I have no place to stay, or I need help, you know, I need an order of protection, mm -hmm. we can refer them to one of those agencies that we mm -hmm. fund, mm -hmm. and they can help them get an order of protection, give them counseling, mm -hmm. provide shelter, and we can, you know, hook yes. them up with the nearest one. So if someone calls about a sexual assault, we can do yeah. that. So we, we have that ability to, you know, provide referrals and that to other mm -hmm. agencies. And we can also provide referrals to other social service agencies. Mm -hmm. um, for example, if you the, you're the victim of a battery and you're unable to go to work, and that, and you may have problems with like your being able to pay your bills and that your utilities, we can refer you to other social service programs that may be able to assist a victim. Mm -hmm. So we try and you know be as holistic as we mm -hmm. as we can mm -hmm. if we can't and if we can't mm -hmm. provide the services ourselves we'll mm -hmm. make those referrals sexual assault is a very serious problem um, and we've been noticing it um, unfortunately in school settings mm -hmm. and uh, it has caused many families to feel very frustrated I, I think we, we go back to even some football players mm -hmm. that uh, were victims of it. Uh, what can be done if, if uh, a, f uh, uh, a teenager comes home from football practice and says, uh, the coach uh, touched me inappropriately? Mm -hmm. Well, 
the parents could call the police, mm -hmm. um, make a report. Um, we'd also make a referral to mm -hmm. a rape crisis center um, to help that mm -hmm. victim deal with those situ you know, what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the rape crisis centers provide services to both males and females and that. That's good. And so do domestic violence. You know, I know a lot of times we refer to victims as she and her, but mm -hmm. there are also males who are victims mm -hmm. as well as other members like of the uh, LGBTQ community oh, and yes. that there yes. are agencies yes. that help with that. Um, you can apply for our crime victim compensation program. We can refer them to um, uh, the Rape Crisis Center, as I say, they can get order uh, civil no contact orders. Yes, yes. Um, counseling. There are yeah. a lot of things that can happen. And one of the things we we like to do is we like to empower victims mm -hmm. and have like give them choices mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. say like I'm if someone calls our 800 number, it's not you need to do this, you need to do that. It's mm -hmm. here are your options. Here's what ava what's available, mm -hmm. and let the victims make their their choice. If one is behind bars, I mean, because uh, this happens, I mean, mm -hmm. I've, I've gotten calls uh, from a young man who was part of the LBGT uh, community, mm -hmm. and he indicated that uh, one of the officers actually had taken a plunger and, mm -hmm. uh, and used that stick inappropriately. And uh, I, uh, you know, I, I, I really felt uh, like I didn't have much power, mm -hmm. uh, but he had seen me on television and he, he said he needed help. So uh, what I did is um, I, I reached out to uh, the leadership of the LBGT uh, mm -hmm. community and, and they took it from there, mm -hmm. and, you know, but I, I feel that anybody uh, should be able to help someone who is a victim no matter what their situation. And so it sounds like to me that the first thing to do is to call the police. You can call the police. You can, if you're not comfortable calling that, the police. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you because can call, sometimes. You can call one of the advocacy groups, one of the programs that I talked yeah. about. Um, for example, like with respect to sexual assault, right. a new law went into effect. Um, last year, which does not require victims to actually report the crime to the police. They can maybe go to the hospital to get a medical forensic exam done, mm -hmm. and that would be to collect evidence and to make sure that they're medically sound, provide them with various medications mm -hmm. and that, mm -hmm. and actually, you know, give them options and okay. that. And if they, they have a choice whether or not to have the evidence uh, tested, Mm -hmm. um, if they choose not to have it tested at that time, they can. They have five years to decide to have it tested. Mm -hmm. They can decide not to talk to the police themselves. They yeah. can say, but the medical provider, like the sexual assault nurse mm -hmm. examiner who did the medical forensic exam can talk to the police instead. So there are a lot of other options besides just like someone themselves right. reporting. That's right, um, yeah, right. I, right. I appreciate you saying that because at, at this point, this young man, I, I did tell him to go to uh, the, the hospital mm -hmm. and to get checked out. But uh, some of the programs we did not know existed mm -hmm. with the Attorney General. Because at that point, uh, I was uh, leading the coalition in uh, Greater Chicago oh. uh, about uh, police uh, uh, accountability mm -hmm. and brutality. Mm -hmm. And so we couldn't really go to that same right. station right. Uh, because of of things that even the consent decree is dealing mm -hmm. with uh, this week uh, about accountability with mm -hmm. the Chicago police. But the Attorney General's office has a 1-800 number that mm -hmm. can give them directions and can help them to be mm -hmm. able to find some uh, solace and support right. in times. And that is really quite mm -hmm. assuring that this can help. Well, for example, if a mm -hmm. sexual assault victim, if, if you were to have called 
um, our 800 line. We could have, mm -hmm. um, you know, provide you with information with the LGBTQ community, could have provided information about a rape crisis to a rape crisis center, mm -hmm. and a rape crisis advocate can come out and it, explain to the victim what his and her choices are. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can report, you can do this, you can do that. And actually, with respect to the Crime Victims Compensation Program, we do recognize that victims of sexual assault, domestic violence, and stalking sometimes are reluctant to report those crimes and so we have like alternative ways to cooperate mm -hmm. and notify police so for example um, with a domestic violence victim if a victim of domestic violence gets an order of protection mm. and doesn't report to the police we they're still eligible for compensation a victim of sexual assault could get a civil no contact order mm -hmm. or could present to the hospital for a medical forensic exam and then they would be eligible for compensation. Now, really, does, so. does this order of protection really work? Uh, I mean, I, I know uh, many people uh, have been referred to, to get this. Mm -hmm. uh, if it doesn't work, you know, uh, if, it, if a person continues to harass someone, mm -hmm. Uh, what step then? Well, then you call the police and you say they violated the order of protection and they can arrest them and prosecute them for violating that order. Um, and if you, that's another crime we cover with our compensation program. Mm -hmm. So for example, if the, her, you know, the her violation of the order continued and the harassment continued and the victim decided, I, I've got to get out of here, mm -hmm. they can, you know, we can pay their relocation expenses. Um, you know, and the penalty for violating a uh, protective order, like for the first time, is a Class A misdemeanor, and then it goes to a felony for the second time. So, so something like 40 days in jail it, if, they, if they mess up. It could be. It could be up mm -hmm. to a year for a Class A misdemeanor. It could be up to a yes, year. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, the protective order, it will deter many offenders from, mm -hmm. you know, continuing that domestic violence, but sometimes if they do violate, we have other remedies. Hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so uh, this, is, this is very helpful. Uh, now we know that people can get help. They can get help uh, and, and in many areas, but when it comes to mental health, mm -hmm. which uh, many agencies have been closed, um, what do you do? Well, they can go to, if they qualify for compensation, they can mm -hmm. go to a private therapist. Mm -hmm. um, they have to be licensed. Um, they have to be like a licensed social worker, a licensed clinical professional counselor. There's like four or five of them. Mm -hmm. If anyone wants to know if their therapist qualifies, give our 800 number mm -hmm. a call, 800-228-3368, mm -hmm. and we can help them out there. So, I mean, we can, Good, you know, good. Uh, have have you worked with the Bobby Bobby Wright uh, Mental Health Center? No, I have not. No, uh, not it's uh, it's an uh, agency in our community mm -hmm. uh, that uh, provides a lot of help, and mm -hmm. I just wanted to mention them. Uh, people can go there mm -hmm. as well uh, because mm -hmm. there's a need for help. Um, does a person have to be a citizen of the United States of America? Suppose they they crossed across the border mm -hmm. and they uh they say to me uh como estas uh, muy bien mm -hmm. will they receive help as well if the crime occurs in illinois yes ah. so you know as as um i think mr williams told you every state has a compensation program mm -hmm. so it's really the state where the crime occurs that pays for compensation. So like if I were to go visit my brother in California and be the victim of a battery, I would apply to that California program. Mm -hmm. If someone is injured or killed in Illinois, they apply here and we do not question citizenship. Mm. Well, so. that's, that, that, that is very good. That is very mm -hmm. good. Um, I'm, uh, you know, I'm really uh, uh, very, very, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm moved about how many programs uh, the Attorney General has, and, uh, and I think that many people need to certainly take advantage of this, and I think that uh, it's important. 
Now, uh, there's another area that I've dealt with. Um, as you probably know, I've, I've been the spokesperson for uh, the Bradley sisters, uh, mm -hmm. the two little girls that have come up missing, uh, and they've been missing now for like 16 years. Uh, families that have experienced those type of situations, uh, first of all, what do you do when, when a child comes up missing? What is the first thing, and how does the Attorney General uh, Office provide that type of help? Well, we would provide referrals to law enforcement, to like Center for Missing and Exploited Children, mm -hmm. um, and you know, basically we would refer them to other places because we wouldn't do the investigation or mm -hmm. whatever, but we could help them with referrals for counseling, mm -hmm. things like that. Okay, great, great. Um, what about the investigation? Is, is that all police? That could be police, it could be FBI if there's some concern about mm -hmm. crossing state lines and mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. um, you know, and depending upon, you know, like if, if a child is missing from one yeah. jurisdiction, they may be conducting, law mm -hmm. enforcement there may be conducting an investigation. If they believe the child was moved to another jurisdiction, they may also be conducting and there should be, you know, coordination in that. Could, could the mother get counseling from your office? Uh, you know, some compensation to, to yes. help in if, that? Yes, if we, like if, um, if it was a kidnapping mm -hmm. and that, yes. Wow, that is great. Yes. Uh, I mean, these are things that I just did not know because mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, that family went through a whole lot and, mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes pastors can go only so far with the, right. the spiritual counsel, but sometimes there's a need for uh, the mm -hmm. assistance of of professionals in, in that area. Well, hopefully you're gonna reach a lot of people today <laughs> and that, and we'll get yes. more calls and Absolutely. I think the more people that know about it, um, the better. Yes. Unfortunately, sometimes we don't pay attention to things we don't think we're gonna need. Yes, yes. <laughs> and well, well, Cindy, uh, we have just a few minutes left. Okay. If you'd like to turn to that camera and say something to uh, the people that are listening, uh, and give them some advice mm -hmm. uh, from your office and uh, any information that you like to do. Okay. I think the camera oh, is... Oh, this one? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, one, one thing that we haven't talked about that I'd like to bring up is um, when there is a criminal case actually filed, if they do um, apprehend an offender and file charges, um, our office does a lot with respect to crime victims' rights. Um, there was a constitutional amendment passed in November of 2014. Um, the Attorney General, Madigan, was very instrumental in that. Yes. Um, we worked on implementation legislation, so if their victims have questions about what's going on and they're, or they're concerned that their right isn't being afforded to them in a criminal case, we can um, provide some assistance there as well. Um, and we also have a victim notification system, which is automated, and you can sign up for it either by on the website or by an 800 number, and all those advocates can help you, as well as those on our toll-free number, and they can tell you when a, uh, an offender has been released on bail, when they've gone to DO Department of Corrections, when they are transferred, things like that, and they can also keep you informed of changes in court dates and that. So that's very important, not only, you know, we're helping victims financially, emotionally, and all that, but we're also working on getting them a voice and participation in the criminal justice system, mm -hmm. which I think is very important, because many feel alienated once they get to that process. Okay, good. So, so we're kind of rounding out the whole picture. You'll actually provide someone in court to sit with the family, explain to them what's going on. Well, in court. we will provide that. The state's attorney's mm -hmm. office will mm -hmm. do that. If it's prosecuted by our office, we mm -hmm. will. Mm -hmm. um, but if, for example, they say, you know, they're telling me I can't attend the trial, mm -hmm. we can help them and act as, you know, contact the state's attorneys and that, make sure that they've asserted their rights in the proper way mm -hmm. so that they can attend trial. Or if they're not getting notification, we can sign them up for the, uh, you can get it by phone, text, text or email, so mm -hmm. we can get them signed up for that. Um, if 
they weren't allowed to make a victim impact statement, we can assist with that. Mm. Um, but we, the state's attorney's office would be the one providing them with that day-to-day -day assistance. So, um, I've got a, a real scenario here. Okay. If the person who has been a victim and has a relative out of town mm -hmm. and they need to get into town, mm -hmm. would the attorney general's office help that parent or those parents to get in town to we would not pay those transportation costs those mm -hmm. are the responsibility of the state's attorney's office okay however if they had to take if their parents and they had to take unpaid leave from their job, we could pay for lost wages. Okay, that's great. So, you know, we can't do everything, but we try and do as much as we can. Wow, this has been just great. National Crime Victims Right Week, and we have had Cindy Hora to share with us some valuable information that helps our state and helps many families and we hope that you will take time to call the Attorney General. And that 1-800 number is again, Cindy? 800-228-3368. All right, let's call that number and find out as much as we can in order to be able to make a difference for our community. Thank you so much, such valuable information. Again, we thank Attorney General uh, Lisa Madigan, and we appreciate her service as she is preparing to go out of office, but we will make still yet one more appeal for her to come to Love in Action and to be a part of our TV show. Thank you so much again. Well, appreciate and thank you, you for spreading the word. Thank Reverend. you. Thank you very much. Our pleasure. And uh, may God bless all of you. And uh, we'll see you uh, next week with more information. Hopefully, we will be talking about uh, people that are coming out of prison and uh, the program that transitions them back into life. I think that this is going to be a great program coming up. Thank you very much. The May. Sing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch.